Hello, and welcome to uh, COIL Conversation today. Uh, thank you for joining us, both all of you in the room and those of you who are joining us online. Uh, my name is Brad Zdenek. I'm the Innovation Strategist for the Center for Online Innovation and Learning. Uh, and today, I have the absolute pleasure of introducing our, our team for the day. Uh, the, the group that's with us today, I met uh, during the fall act PSU uh, that was held at the University Park campus in the IST building. And if you're not familiar with uh, a Hackathon or Hack PSU, it's this 24-hour, a little over that, but basically 24-hour intensive experience where students come in and are faced with challenges uh, by various sponsors. Okay? And the challenges are presented to this large group of students who come in and very often come in from across, across the country. This fall hack was for Penn State students. Specific, but all the students from cross campuses that were interested came in and spent 24 hours without sleep working intently on figuring out how to build a technological solutions to the problem that we were facing. We had the pleasure, the Center for Online Innovation and Learning had the pleasure of co-sponsoring a challenge with the EdTech Network. We came together and we said, "There's a problem." What is a technological solution you can come up with to a problem you faced in your higher education experience? So just think of a problem you have. And what could you do to, to solve that problem, to address that? The team we have here with us today is the winner of that challenge. Uh, they ended up competing against uh, roughly 12 other teams that had great ideas. Uh, and it was a very tough competition. But a panel of judges, uh, myself included, sat down and talked through the, the solutions that were, that were presented to us. And this idea was refreshing. It was innovative. It was well designed. It was well presented, as you'll see today as we, as we talk with the, uh, the developers. And it blew us away. And we sat down, and when we sat down at the table, we all looked at each other and said to, to each other, this, this is the winner, right? And we went through and we gave the scores, and, and it was. Uh, so what we have done is today, after a few more months of development time, we've decided to host this COIL conversation to give them the opportunity to sit down and talk with, with you and tell you about their app, tell you about their idea, and tell you about their, their, their projected path for this uh, for a few different reasons. Number one, to highlight some innovative work that's being done by students uh, here at the university. Uh, number two, to see if there are other individuals interested in this tool and starting conversations around the possible applications for this tool and continued development of this tool and integration into Penn State possibly into this tool, but to have conversations about it and to further the conversation. And finally, uh, Center for Online Innovation and Learning is focused on developing conversations with each other about the future of the university and the future of learning. And I think that these uh, these three students that are sitting in front of us, and the reason I haven't introduced them is because they want to introduce themselves, which is, which is what we'll get to in just a second. But what they, are, what they are representing is the future of the ideas and the future of innovation at this university. And so it's my absolute pleasure to have them here with us today. Um, what I'm going to do is very quickly uh, talk, about the, uh, uh, talk about where we are heading with what COIL is going to be bringing to the table with this project, and I'm going to hand it over. But in, uh, in part of this challenge, what they were able to, uh, to be awarded was this COIL conversation, this opportunity to interact with uh, the Penn State community. And then also, uh, we are going to be offering them, in partnership with the EdTech Network, we're going to be offering them an opportunity to have a seat at the table at, future ed tech, uh, at a future EdTech Network event, where they're going to be able to interact with some venture capitalists in, this, in the EdTech uh, domain in order to look at where this app could go in the future and what the, the future potential is for this. Uh, so again, thank you all for coming here. And with that, I'll hand it over to our, our student team. One more thing, though, which I should have mentioned right at the beginning. We're at Penn State Berks today. Um, many of you are used to us being at uh, University Park campus for our event. So we are being hosted by Penn State Berks. And, and I want to put a, a great thank you uh, to the entire team here for having us. So, Crunch team. Thanks, Brad. I would just like to start off by reiterating 
Brad said, thank you all for being here both physically and virtually. Um, today's topic, of course, is Crunch, our application that we created, originally named Study at the Hackathon in fall. Um, all of the presentation slides, extra information, and contact information can be found at our website, crunchapp.xyz. We will first begin by introducing ourselves, the original team that built the study application at HackDSU. Myself, I'm Caleb Kitchen. I am a security and risk analysis student at Penn State Berks. I am going to try and minor in Chinese, and I am an avid Linux user, and my hobbies include building and maintaining Linux web servers and websites. I'm Tyler. I'm a sophomore here at Berks. I'm majoring in computer science, and while I'm primarily interested in application development, I've become familiar with hardware and microcontrollers through research here on campus. My name is Venu. And I'm a junior majoring in information sciences and technology and minoring in security risk analysis and business. And I love to use technology to solve real life everyday problems. So to start off, um, let me talk about our app a little bit. So our app is, a, is made by the students and for the students. Um, it is an innovative step in the field of, techno in the field of education by using social networking. So our app was first named as study when we made the first prototype at Hack uh, PSU, and now we are calling it Crunch. So the whole idea of our app is to um, develop a Tinder-like network, which will help students to form study groups on campus or find real-time tutoring, which will make uh, studying for higher level courses, uh, which can be difficult at some point, will be easier as you will find people of your age and in your classes you can talk to because Nowadays, we go to class together, but not necessarily talk to everyone. So by using this app, you can communicate with each other and solve your problems, doubts, and come together and study in groups. Finding help for coursework can be difficult, and forming study groups when you aren't interacting with many of the students in your courses can be even harder. Yes, Penn State offers the Learning Center, but the number of courses offered are limited, and there's only so many times that you can go. Professors' office hours are also a resource, but many students have anxiety going to visit professors, and there's limited times for the office hours as well. Working with a fellow student is often simply more comfortable. They've learned the material more recently, and they're more relatable. To be clear, Crunch doesn't necessarily replace the existing resources. It simply adds to them and can stand alone as an additional tool. So what we found was that while students could find the other students in their classes to help form these groups and study with each other, there's not really an initiative to, and in today's generation, we're all kind of glued to our phones. We don't really want to talk with other people. So our application mm -hmm. kind of helps in that sense. Um, also to mention, it, it helps connect people who are in other sections of the course that you may never see or even talk to. Also, there are the people who have already taken the courses, so previous students who want to come back and reinforce what they've learned. For Tyler and myself, we're both commuters. We live about 40 minutes away. We don't stay on campus to socialize. We don't, if we have a class and we have another class right after it, we're going straight to the next class. We're not going to talk. So this application could really help someone like us where we would just like to be able to put our schedule in, try and figure out when to meet somebody, and be able to have that freedom of connecting with others and studying with them. The initial idea, to touch back on what Vina said, was that it's a Tinder-esque application, which means it was originally designed, the original concept was that we would match students together. What we took from that was then being able to form study groups based off of whether or not the person had the willingness and the ability to actually study with others. We wanted it to be a mobile application. That way, people could use it wherever they need to, whenever they need to. And currently, it is an Android-only operating application. However, we would like to work for iOS, and we are working on a web interface as well. We'll touch more on that a bit later. Um, the also thing we wanted to do is cover a broad range of subjects. This way, instead of just having like the Writing Center or the Math Center, this our application would be able to cover all of the subjects, such as Chinese, uh, IST, CompSci, all of the programs that don't exactly have tutoring systems already in place. Everything else 
another goal with Crunch is to have everything you need to communicate with people you're studying with right within the app. Yes, people can use text messaging or Facebook Messenger to communicate with their group, but they shouldn't have to leave the, group, the application. It should all be in one nice cohesive unit. In Crunch, algorithms match students who otherwise wouldn't have met. There are many different tutors and many more times to study. Crunch is a smart 21st century solution to forming study groups through social networks. Let's talk about where it all started at Hack PSU. So we went to Hack PSU with a very basic idea of a prototype to design an app uh, which will help make uh, students come together and study for their subjects. Um, so what a hackathon is. Hackathon is basically a coding marathon which is spanned over a period of 24 hours, 48 hours or over a week. There are many different varieties of hackathons like which are held at college level, high school level or in companies. Uh, ours was at the college level at Penn State University. Uh, hackathons are, have unique challenges and have a lot to offer as you go uh, meet a lot of people, network and find someone with similar interests and build products which you would have not done in one day otherwise. Um, Hack PSU was the first for Hack PSU internal hackathon where it, uh, around 250 students from 10 state participated. Um, and this hackathon was uh, 24 hours. So all the students were there for 24 hours, didn't sleep, um, just went, went for the break and worked on what their passion was and built products. So at the hackathon, once you've completed the project, you have like a presentation stage where you show off your application all of the people who have put up challenges. As Brad had mentioned before, him at COIL and the EdTech Network co-sponsored a challenge program, which is as follows. Think of a problem that you face as a student in higher education and design a technology-based solution to solve that problem. Our problem was that we were having trouble finding people to get in touch with to study with. We wanted to be able to go through our material and talk to others and be able to study our information that we've learned in class, but we weren't really finding the people that we needed to. So our obvious solution was to create an application to do it for us. I'm going to touch on a little bit of a story at Hack PSU is that we, um, when we were in the presentation stage, the COIL team, the EdTech Network, the judges, they never showed up to our booth. And Brad, you can join in on this if you want, but mm. What had happened was at the hackathon, the organizers had put our names on their list. So they just didn't realize that we were on their list. Um, about in the last 10 minutes or so, you said? Uh, yeah, it was actually a, a less than 10 minutes from the point that we had to have our decision in hand right. uh, for, to the judges. We had looked through all of our submissions and had determined a winner and then uh, case study in tenacity, uh, they walked up to our desk and said, you know, you never came by our desk. Uh, just wanted to make sure you knew. And, uh, and yeah, so I had, was made. I had these uh, little brochures made up about our application, the original study application that showed what it did, the problem it solved, um, how it worked, what was planned for the future. We had a full list of features in this brochure. I handed it to all of you guys. And then I ended up bringing you guys back to our, our uh, booth and we displayed it, went over all of it, and uh, through our presentation we were able to show how we met the challenges goal. So the name of our app at this point was Study uh, and that was what we presented to the judges at the hackathon. Um, so the proof of concept, um, despite having this 24 hours which is a very limited time to accomplish a working prototype of any uh, software, uh, we fairly did a good job and presented a working prototype. Uh, the study app had many placeholder elements and unimplemented features, but it had the basic functionality at that point, so we could make profiles uh, and pass it to the database. The concept itself was there, however, the app was not as a whole working, uh, which is now in its process, but uh, it worked out pretty well and we could show what our idea was and how we wanted, to, wanted it to work to the judges. Um, now we will proceed to the app which is now called Crunch. On the screen you can see the user interface for study. The first picture shows the login screen. At this stage users registered with an email address and a password. 
There was no persistent login, so every time someone opened the app, they needed to log in once again. The second picture is the edit profile screen. Whenever a user registers for the first time, they're instantly taken to this edit profile screen. They can edit their name, their phone number, their email address, and choose a campus. At this point, it was just Berks or Maine. You can see that there's a little profile picture icon up there, but that feature wasn't completed within the 24 hours. The, there are five courses on the bottom that students can choose to give and receive tutoring in. And at this stage, those were the only five that were supported. In the third picture, you can see the matches screen. Returning users are taken to this screen when they open the app. Users were given six random matches, and clicking on the picture for any of these users will take you to their profile. The final picture shows the navigation drawer for the application. This is how you can get between the screens for all of your needs within the application. Not long after, we began working on the new version of the application, which we had now named Crunch. Work, became over, work began over winter break and in earnest after the new year. It's substantially improved, and everything you see here is fully functional. And we'll spend the next few minutes going over the improvements we've made. This is the new login screen on Crunch. There's no longer a email and password combination. It's done through linking with an existing service. This is more secure, and it's seamless, easy, instant. It's easier for us to manage, and it often doesn't require users to make new accounts. The first picture is the login screen, and the second picture shows the process of opening the application, logging in, and beginning to use it. There is now persistent login, meaning that when a user does open the application, if they're logged in, they'll stay logged in each time. This is similar to most social networking apps, and it gives a more professional feel to it. Users can delete their account from the account settings menu and log out, both which are available in the navigation drawer. For anyone familiar with Android, we made it a goal to have Crunch fit within the Android ecosystem. All of the designs you'll see on the screen follow Google's official specifications, which should give it an instantly familiar interface. <clears throat> so off the bat, um, new users are taken to the edit profile screen shown on the left. This is where they can input their basic information and uh, create their account if this is their first time logging in. In Crunch, a lot of the information that we, we need for a basic profile, such as the image, the first name, and the last name, we can pull directly from Facebook, which is really nice. On the this, this version of the application has the ability to edit your ed educational related information and currently all of the Penn State campuses and majors are supported. On the right you can see the new navigation drawer which, has, um, which shows how a user gets to this edit profile screen. On this slide you can see how a user sets their profile data as well as such as their school, major, and their about text. And on the right side, you can see when a student chooses a course <coughs> to study in or tutor, they select the corresponding button first, and then they proceed to choose the subject that they want. And from inside there, they can choose each of the courses that they have either completed or need help in based on that subject. There are approximately 10,000 different classes, courses offered at Penn State that are um, supported by our application. Um, once again, just like study, um, returning users are brought to the matches page. Um, firstly, uh, users are just deemed compatible or not on the matches page. And then, um, as you can see in the second uh, picture, uh, it loads as a sc scrolling list that you can scroll through all the matches and see who you want to work with. Work with. Um, it is just like all other social networking apps that we use on a daily basis. Um, each user also has their own profile page. Uh, wherein they can uh, see, um, so as you can see in the first picture, that is the My Profile page, wherein you can see the uh, profile picture that you have set for yourself and some information about yourself, like what courses you might want to receive tutoring in or what courses you are comfortable tutoring others in. And the second picture is how you see another uh, person's profile page, 
So when you go to your matches page, you click on the person you want to view uh, more information about and then that's how you will view the person with his name, his profile picture just like you see yours and um, the university he is attending and the courses he re wants to receive tutoring in and in which he's comfortable with tutoring people in. New to Crunch are a number of user management features similar to most social networks you're familiar with. There's a favorites page where a given user can choose other users that they'd like to be that they'd like to access easily. The first picture shows the process of toggling someone to be a favorite, and the second picture is similar to how the favorites page does look. The second feature is blocked users. Blocked users no longer appear with a user's matches on the matches screen. And the process for toggling a blocked user is similar to the first picture, just with thumbs down icon. And the, the page for that is in the center of the screen. The, by clicking on the picture for any of the users on the blocked users page, it'll take you to their profile. And clicking on the thumbs down button will instantly remove them from the list. Third user management feature is a rating system. It's a five star rating system. And you might have seen the ratings on the matches page, but this is the process of actually rating a user. You click on one of the stars and confirm it, and the rating updates on the matches slide. This is the current state of crunch as it exists today, and we did just about all this within the last month. Um, so as we all know, we have uh, an Android app for crunch right now, and we would definitely love to make an iOS app. But we chose Android for now because Java is the language which we are the most comfortable in. And uh, the, the accounts which you require to develop Android apps, the developer account is just $25 a year. Uh, while if you want to do that for iOS, you um, need to get the $100 a year um, account. And also you need a uh, Mac and an iPhone, which we do not have right now. Um, we chose Android uh, because also we are most comfortable with the IDE that we are using. And um, we would definitely like to branch out into iOS when we have the right amount of resources and knowledge. So also we would like to get that web platform that I touched on a little bit earlier. It would have the basic usage of chatting with somebody, setting up a uh, meeting time that you need with them. But we'd like to keep it a little bit limited, sort of how like Instagram's website is, if you're familiar with that, where you're limited to certain aspects of the application. But mostly everything can be done on the phone. We're in the process of implementing a chat system at this point. We were hoping to have that done for today, but there's a little more work that needs to go into the app end of that. Other than that, it's complete and ready for use. This starts our plan of having users not need to leave the app for communicating between each other. One of the other future things, sort of more of a long-term goal, would be to have multi-school support. Um, we believe our application is a tool that any student should be able to use, and we don't think it should just be one small ecosystem of students who get to use it. This, this tool could help a lot of people anywhere, so that's where we'd like to see our application go. At this stage, users are left to figure out scheduling meeting times on their own. In the future, each user's profile will display their schedule. It should make it easier to plan scheduling times on their own and users to be matched based off their scheduled times. This is just one potential matchmaking improvement that we'd like to add. By the app's nature, users will constantly be forming changing groups. That's why we'd like to add a grouping system to make it easier to manage constant regular groups like a Chinese study group on Wednesdays. So one of the other aspects that we definitely need in the future is QR, some sort of proof of studying. Uh, this would either be through QR codes that each of them scan, uh, GPS validation, or NFC touch. And we would like to have this so that when it comes to rating a user, we know that they've studied with them. We know that they've definitely had an experience with them and that their rating is going to be more, um, more in tune with how they actually are. We also have future plans for this part of the application that we'll touch on another time. So now uh, we would like to tell you how the framework, how the back end of the app works. And for those of you who want to learn more about it can talk to us about it later.
Crunch is being created in Android Studio, which is Google's official IDE. It's the program that most modern Android applications are developed in. For getting, for getting information to fill the pages you've seen, the app pulls the server for that information, then in the background fills that information into the screen and then displays that for the user. That's different than how study worked. In study, the screen was displayed for the user and then populated with the information, which gave more of a jagged feel. The new method is seamless, quick, and much more professional looking in general. When the app needs to send information to the server, all of that is done in the background, which allows the interface to, st interface to stay quick and usable, even if massive information is being sent and saved onto the server. We currently support Android's versions 4.1 and up. According to Android Studio, this is about 93% of active Android phones. We need to stick with 4.1 and up for design and feature restraints. But 4.1 is already a few years outdated, so we're confident that by the time we're ready for the spotlight, it'll no longer be a major issue. So on the server side, what we have is a cloud server, a virtual private server, that we run and we, we rent it from a hosting company. It's running a LAMP stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. How the application connects and grabs data this from the server, uh, for an example, would be if it's requesting a user, it, the application will send us a Facebook user ID linked to that person, and then it will contact the PHP script hosted by the Apache service, which then calls all the data related to that user's ID from the SQL server, takes that back to the PHP, then compiles it into what it needs and what it doesn't need, and then makes it into a readable format that the application can use and then sends it back on its way where it's then put onto the screen for the, for the user. A main goal when we started working on Crunch was to design features with easy expandability in mind. For us, at this stage, that means that we can make changes to the server without needing to change the individual apps. This may seem like a small improvement at this point, but database changes are comparatively easier than changing the rather complex application. And as we create an iOS and a web version of the app, they'll be created with the same mindset and we'll be able to change the information available to the users without pushing an update to each one of the platforms. This saves even more time and headache. So we would really like to get in contact with everybody who's been here today and who wants to discuss with us. Uh, currently, the application takes up a lot of our time, and we could definitely use some support with working on it. Whether it be people, time, money, or information, we'd definitely love to get in touch. So if you have ideas or any sort of information that you think would be helpful for us, feel free to get in touch with us at our emails on the slide, or all of our emails are on our website as well. So now we'd like to open up to discussion. So I'll remind everyone in the room, and for those of you who came in later, uh, we have a significant online audience. So if you have a question, just let me know, and I'll bring the mic over to you. Uh, but while I let you mull it over a little bit, we, we have a fair number of questions that came in online. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with a few of them. One of them, which was quick for you to answer, hopefully, is uh, there was a question whether or not World Campus courses were included in your list of courses. I know we had dinner last night, and you were talking about some of the complexity of finding a definitive list of courses. Right. Do you so know what those are? If World Campus is listed online, so if the course is listed online where there's, uh, forget what website it is on our, on our forums, but they have the subjects listed and then all of the classes inside of there. So if World Campus is one of those classes, it'll be listed in our database. We have every class, including right now, the administrative classes as well. Is it overly complex to update that, or is there any way, or uh, have you explored any possibilities of having that automatically updated based on registrar information? We don't have it automatically updated at the moment. What I would like, uh, which follows into the multi-school support, is to build an administrative page where schools can come in and throw in any information that's missing from the database. Right now, it, I mean, it'd be really easy to add the courses if they're missing, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be a problem. 
Uh, one of the other questions, so we, we have a, a participant online uh, who has been very involved in uh, working with grouping students in massive courses and MOOCs, uh, where you often have thousands of individuals all in these forums and, and developing small study groups or developing small groups within that format uh, can be complex. And so I can combine two of the questions that came in online. With this. Um, she was asking what the functionality is for developing study groups, and I think we talked about that, that that's on the roadmap. Um, but also, uh, uh, how, how do you see that you could possibly integrate this for online students in, in different ways than what the physical, face-to-face -face students, such as yourselves, you talked about being commuters and the, the impetus for creating this kind of app. But what about those online students that are interested in working together and finding mentors or tutors or forming study groups? So to bring it back to World Campus, they are listed as one of the campuses on our on our application. So if you are in the World Campus, you can select that as your, your campus and you'll be able to match up with people from there. Uh, when it comes to doing meetings and things like that online, you could always set up um, in the grouping system to share your like, Google Plus or your Skype ID, or even if you have like an Adobe Connect classroom where you can all meet up and get in there. We could do something like that, as well as maybe, if possible, we could try and host something on our website that would help connect, like a web connect. But that's probably way down the line. This stage, users are left to decide how they want to interact. They're matched up, but and they can communicate through the app. But after that, they're left to determine what method they'll use to get in contact with each other. So it is very open to that and we'll probably add a little more structure. You see that you mentioned the, the forums element to this. Do you see that as being one of those avenues for creating groups where there are you know, closed discussion groups online or are you really thinking of keeping it that open, use what you prefer? I mean I'm not really familiar with the forums yeah. but I'm sure it could be implemented rather easily. Questions in the room before I keep on going? Yeah, Ron, just one second. I apologize that we have to walk around, but since we have so many presenters, we are short on mics. Uh, I have two questions to the team. <clears throat> you said a student is very hard to meet people. The fact that you met, I want to kind of say how that happened, if you want to discuss that, as how you formed in the team. And the second part is, I'm sure there are many other students wondering, where did they get the time? So could you kind of help other students understand how you ch chalked out time, if you will, to get this done? <laughs> oh, well, um, we met through, it all started with the hackathon, actually, with Konak emailing me, saying I was the first one to email back and making me team leader, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I started talking to Jen Platt up at main campus, who was running the whole entire hackathon system and then starting a developer network here on campus and then just trying to get as many people as we could involved in the group to get them to come up to the hackathon in the fall. And that's how I met Venue at least. Yeah. Tyler I've known since high school. Um, as for time to do this, we had a winter break that we spent what is it? Most of most that most of <laughs> that on the application and then as much as we could through the new year, and now we've we've slowed down to the fall. Yeah, so definitely. We don't have that time. Combining questions again, we have uh, two questions, related questions online. Uh, Ruth is with us online, and she runs the uh, learning center at Barron, and says that uh, she gets op applications from students who are interested in working as mentors or tutors, but these individuals are not necessarily qualified. Uh, and one of the other questions we had earlier on was, who are these tutor volunteers? Is it you check a box, and that means that you are now in the system as a tutor? There's some sort of vetting process? At this stage, yes. You do just click the box, and at that point, you are signed up to be a tutor. But one of the features that we hope to have done in at least the next few months would be some sort of integration with Penn State's network and then we can limit it to only students who have received an A in the course 
and only students who have been approved by a professor. There are many different avenues to go to confirm that they are that qualified. The other thing is, is that right now it's just so that all students can meet up with each other. But that's what the whole entire rating system is for, hopefully, is that if they're not qualified or they don't know the subject or something, they can get knocked down in a couple ranks of stars and people won't want to go and study with them. So that's one of the ways. And, and so at, at most, you wasted two hour-long sessions with them or something of the sort. Yeah, yeah. And for the most part, they will be matched. People will be matched with users of higher star ratings, so the people who have shown proficiency will have more interaction. Um, another uh, question that came in online is who gets to see the ratings? So you rate the, these tutors. Is that open for everyone to see uh, or, is, or is that closed off in any way whatsoever? It's not closed off at all. It's open to whoever is going to be looking at that user's profile. And this is my question. I'll, I'll get over here just one second. This, this question I had as you were talking about the technical aspect and the server in particular. So scaling is always an issue with any sort of application like this. Uh, what are the issues with scaling and particularly what would you anticipate being the cost to run something of this sort at a university like Penn State? Is, is this something that cannot be scaled and needs to stay uh, with a small select group of people or is this something that can be relatively easy? I was actually just in talk with Dave's partner Mike about this and um, we spoke about scalability and working on different servers like that. I'm not sure on the cost at the moment but it can definitely be done if we need to. Right now it's small and as we keep the data group small it would be unnecessary to scale it that large but if we get to an official launch and we expect a lot of users we will be able to scale it. We already have someone that we can work with to build the infrastructure that we Thank you. And then back over to London. Uh, the other qu the question I have is, let's say I'm a student and I am in crunch, Stuart ER crunch. Can I self-rate myself to boost? This is one of the things a lot of online system people do is like you, another thing about gaming the system. So you game it so you get more popularity. I don't know if there is any thought process down the line to take care of that. The second question let me add in, since it is meant for students and studying, do you have any feature I as a faculty would like to add myself in just to help a tutoring not to be paid? Nothing. It's just because I want to do it in a different subject. Is that allowed? For the concern of users writing themselves through the interface, they're, that's not possible. They simply cannot edit their own rating. Now we did have the concern of everybody, eight students getting together, sitting around the table and all giving, them, giving each other five star ratings. Now at this stage that is possible, but through the proof of studying that we are going to implement rather soon, that they'll need to prove that they would have interacted for a substantial amount of time and achieved some sort of progress before they could even rate each other. And then for the second part of the question, which was, could you reiterate it? As a faculty, right. I mean, if you have a Facebook account right now, you can probably log in and join up and be a, a tutor. So I don't see the problem with it. I, I would assume that it would be fine. We could make a specialty account for teachers if they'd like to that could request for an account that would appear on the top of the list when there is a subject that you're tutoring in. And that would take a little more than 20 yeah. minutes at this point. That wouldn't take long at all. So you gave us a sense of where you want this to go. Uh, but what I didn't get a sense of is how you want to, to get there. Uh, are you looking, are you really hoping that this will become a Penn State tool and then perhaps from there move beyond perhaps licensing to other universities and like, or are you thinking of this as this is your business opportunity, this is something that you want to develop as, as your own business, particularly with President Barron's entrepreneurship initiatives right now and Invent Penn State. Is that the avenue you're looking for, or are you looking for the more traditional academic route? You build something, you open source it, and, and see what happens. I think, I'm not sure. 
be honest with you, we haven't really discussed it much, but I think possibly the ability to build it as a company, as an entrepreneurship venue, that'd be the way we would like to go. But as we are at Penn State, we are students, we are building it as a Penn State school at the moment, I don't see a problem with going that route either. Right now, we haven't taken much thought into it. We've honestly just been programming. And the, the few methods that we've considered to make this profitable have not been costs on the school or the institution. They have been either advertising or student paid. So we'd like it to organically spread as much as possible. Uh, online, uh, Whitney is asking, are, are, do you plan on tutors being paid? We really haven't delved into that. Or is, if not, what's the motivation to be a tutor? That, that's what I was mentioning about the future aspect of proof of studying, is that we would like to eventually have some sort of paid tutor system. The user would obviously need to have a good standing with our application. Uh, they would need to recently possibly talked about poss um, submitting a trans like a not a transcript but a degree audit and they would also have to have like a high rating but they would eventually be able to get in touch with the other students agree on an amount per student basis or whatever and then with that proof of studying both of them could agree to that amount and how much they paid so you almost build up a reputation inside the system, yeah. and once you hit that certain benchmark, you can apply to be a page Okay. Um, I just had a question. Um, another question, uh, Doug Wilson online is asking. So at the very beginning, you talked about the influence of grading. As you said, you know, students don't talk to each other. You put your head down, you go between classes, and he wanted you to kind of to talk about that for a second because he. he uh, his actual question is, I'm curious about the earlier comment that young people don't want to talk to each other. Can you explain more about why that you made that comment, why that's true? Why I made that comment is you see everybody on their phones texting a lot, and at least in my experience, all of the classes that I've had, in, at least in my main subjects, everybody kind of knows the person next to them but doesn't really talk to them that much afterwards or just goes on with their thing. They don't really look out or spread out. They're usually just glued to their phones or they're glued to not talking or just have anxiety about talking to other people. Um, we just think that right now we're in kind of a weird stage of our generation where we're so used to social media that we're not connecting with our fellow peers as much as we should. Now, for a university like this, like we said, we're both commuters. Mm -hmm. So our situation is a little different than people over there in the dorms who are all living closely packed together. We drive here for our two, three courses a day, and we scurry between them, and then we go home in the evening if there aren't any opportunities to interact. Yeah. I don't think it's a unique experience. One thing that I've also seen is uh, whenever I have group projects, a lot of people in my groups are working, so they necessarily don't have time to stay back after their classes or talk to anyone. They just have to go to work, so even while making up time for a group, meetings, it's a very difficult task. So I think even in that aspect, we can use this app so that we can, you know, if we know, we know their schedule and we have already paired up with them for tutoring or as study groups, then this will also help there in that way. Uh, on, online, uh, we've got a couple suggestions, a lot of dialogue going back and forth online, uh, not necessarily questions, but one of the things that's rising out of this is that perhaps one of the ways of mitigating some of these concerns about the quality of tutors is integrating uh, a training into the app. So if you decide you want to be a tutor, before you can check that box, you have to go through a webinar, a training, uh, using any sort of resource that's already out there, not necessarily developed by you, that talks about how to be a good tutor or how to be a tutor. Uh, and that in combination with being able to verify past experience in a course might help relieve some of those concerns. So in reply to that, on our website, we're going to have videos on how to be a great tutor now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi. My question is, um, this is actually kind of cool because I'm a fellow student. I actually live on the campus. And the separation that I see between the commuters and the people who live on campus isn't really different. It's kind of almost the same thing. You go to your classes. 
you go to your dorm, you lock your door, good night. That's kind of how it works, except for when people are friends and they live in the same hall and whatnot. My question is, because as a student, I see things that happen all around here, and I see ideas, and I see events and whatnot, but I don't see anybody talking about it. Um, have you thought, and I, I don't know if you have, but have you at least had a discussion, conversation about how you would advertise this to start off, you know, Penn State campuses to make it a viable tool that is limited to Penn State that would later on get other people who go to universities that aren't Penn State to be like that. They have this thing that's really, really cool. Why don't we have that? And then you have like a demand of like, oh, we want this, and then you kind of have that you know, process of getting to other schools. So have you just thought of how you would advertise this to fellow students to make it viable for them? I think through Brad and I talked about this last night, about how starting with a small group on campus would be the best way to start off, and then expanding and hoping to get other teachers involved. We would like to get the teachers involved in using it and beta testing the application first, and then having other classrooms learn about it through that. They would be able, it wouldn't be like a closed beta, but we would have a certain set of people that we would want on there to start. That way, people who could join and want to join would be able to. And then from there, by either word of mouth or online or anywhere, people would try and we would hope that people would spread it and try and build the community there and build something out of it on their own. Marketing it right now hasn't been one of our priorities, but we're definitely thinking about it. As there do end up getting more users, we're also kind of hoping that the departments will pick it up as faculty sees that this could help students in my course, and then as that sort of levels off, then the engineering department, the IST major, it'll be sent out to them, and they can all start slowly adjusting. So at the end, you gave, uh, you know, if you're interested, if you want to help, here's uh, contact information. But what do you need? Uh, who do you need at the table? What, what do you see as your barriers to the next steps of making this a viable platform, a viable tool? For the multiple versions of the application, at this stage, we do want an iPhone and iOS version. But none of us at this point have any experience on that or the hardware or the user account. So that alone, if we had somebody who had those resources who would, or even information on that, who can assist in creating another version of the application for the iOS platform, it would greatly help. And we would love to just continue the conversation that this has brought, that we've got out of this right now. So what we would like is for people to get in contact with us, just talk to us about it, generally be interested to help us build out of it. Suggestions are always welcome. Yeah. And uh, since we uh, online we don't have your contact info up there anymore, uh, just for everyone's information, we'll be posting this video up on our website once we're done uh, sometime next week, and we'll make certain to put your contact information on there as well uh, so that people can reach out to you uh, if necessary. It's all on the first section of our website. Any other questions in, in the room? I've, there are a couple people typing online, so I'm trying to stall for a second while they, they finish <laughs> typing. So there you can't see where, what people are typing as they're going along. Uh, what um, grade are you guys in? What, what years are you? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore? Junior. OK, so you'll be here a couple years. Wow. Are, are you going to stay here, or are you going to University Park? We're going to University. You are, okay. I'm good. But the application as a whole is between campuses, yeah, so we're more than capable of continuing the progress from multiple campuses as well. And have you worked with uh, any of the students in the entrepreneurship minor to help you on some of the business development side or anything? We haven't quite yet, simply because the event was in November and then from November to now, we've been working on trying to get that prototype hammered out. So currently, we haven't really been working on the business side or the, the entrepreneurship side, but that's definitely the next step for us. So we're actually uh, just about out of time. Uh, so 
I'll, I'll give a bit of a closing, and if those who are typing online end up with a question, we'll, we'll shoehorn it in at the very end. But I, I want to put in perspective again what you just said. Uh, this app was developed in a 24-hour hackathon uh, in November. And what you see here is the extension of what was done in that 24 hours that impressed us so much, uh, and a few months of develop development with three people who are taking courses and fully involved in their coursework. Uh, if, if we wouldn't blow out the microphone, I'd ask for a round of applause for them. Maybe I'll do it once we end our session. Uh, but uh, you've impressed you've impressed me uh, based on the comments that happened in our chat session here. You've, you've impressed many online. I'm sure you've impressed many in the room uh, with your idea. And I would encourage any of those of you who are online or in the room, if you have ideas, if you have something you can bring to the table to help out, to encourage, uh, to make connections, uh, to go to their website. And again, we'll make sure we link to that on the COIL website, which is coil.psu.edu. And your website is quantapp.xyz. Um, it's, Haley, if you can throw up the presentation real quick, quantapp.xyz. Uh, uh, you can go there and get their contact information for more. So with that, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I want to tell you uh, again how uh, grateful we are to be a part of your story. Uh, Larry on, on here as well. Larry Reagan was one of the other uh, judges uh, on this on this app, our co-director of COIL. He wanted to also say how, how proud we are to be a part of this story. And we will continue to try to help and develop this uh, as it moves along and make the right connections for you to try to get this, uh, this built out and uh, used by uh, students from Penn State. So I want to thank all of you here, all of you virtually who uh, joined us, and uh, please visit coil.psu.edu to see about future events. Appreciate it. Have a great day.